Okay, so we decided to see Predators at the AMC Burbank 16 in Burbank. I actually, I always forget how impressive and how kind of epic that theater is. This is a huge, impressive looking theater. Yeah. It actually has a pretty good arcade for a movie theater, which most movie theaters have the one room off to the side, like a couple, like Daytona USA or Cruise in USA, maybe. I call it like one claw machine. Carl, you actually attempted to win yourself a Nintendo DS Lite from one of the machines. Uh, how much does a Nintendo DS Lite cost? I don't actually know, but it's got to be over $100. So even if I spend $10 trying to get it, if I win, it's like I'm getting it for $10. But, the but machine was broken. It just ate your dollar and... I to the people. You didn't say anything to anybody. And the movie's about to start. Burbank, Burbank is, is like, that, that's the theater we go to for a movie like Predators. Burbank is where you go if you, like, don't really give a shit about the movie. You go to Burbank when you're not really looking to have any kind of special time. I feel like there's really never a good reason to go to Burbank. Like, if you have to go somewhere else, and you also want to see a movie, that's typically the reason to go to Burbank. Go anywhere but Burbank if you're in the area. We like Burbank. It kind of sucks. That used to be a macaroni grill. What is it now? This one right... It, I think it's just empty. The original Predator came out in 1987, and it had this Alan Silvestri score, which sounded exactly like Back to the Future, which had come out two years earlier. Uh, so for lunch, we thought we should go to the Burger King that was featured at the beginning of Back to the Future. Right there is where Doc Brown's lab was. Just this empty area. Marty locks the gate, he skateboards down this road, and goes out through there. Grabs onto a pickup or something. Huh. Got a Twilight Eclipse toy. It's just like, it's a ball. It's got the Edward logo and the Jacob. I thought composer John Debney did an amazing job making this sound like an Alan Silvestri score because it was a great score, but at the same time, it didn't keep reminding me of Back to the Future the way the first Predator did. So with the score in mind, we headed down to Dark Delicacies in Burbank. So right now we're at Dark Delicacies in Burbank, and in there they're having a Predators event. Inside that building right now is John Debney, the composer of the score of Predators, and two of the guys who actually played Predators in the movie. And if you go in there and buy the soundtrack, they will all autograph the soundtrack and they will give you a free, full-size theatrical poster for Predators. They'll all sign that. You get your picture taken with them. And there are people just all over the world right now who would kill to be here to get this opportunity. And really, the, the score was one of my favorite parts of Predators. But in order to get all that, you have to buy the soundtrack here, and it's like 18 bucks, so probably not going to do it. Dark Delicacies is this, uh, it's, it's like this bookstore. If you're into ghosts and vampires and just the occult, is it magic? A lot of occult stuff. I don't, I don't even know what they have there. I don't know how to describe this store. So just tell us why you won't see Predators. Andro! So here's my brother Hondro to explain why he doesn't want to see predators. It's just it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't make sense to me in the in the in the predator canon that group of a group of schmucks could fight like twenty predators. You don't even have any idea what you're talking about. You when we saw the movie and you uh, don't know anything. It's okay, is it is it a bunch of guys that aren't Jesse Ventura and Apollo Creed? Yeah. And Schwarzenegger fighting, like, how many predators? Like, 30 predators? Less. Like, 20? You don't have to have big 10. muscles to fight the predators. You have to have brains. No, you muscle. These are, like, the Gatling top guns. guys. These are the top guys. No, they're not. They're, you know, they're black ops. They're, they're, they're not, everything. They're every not, every not, nationality, everything is represented. Stupid. And Robert Rodriguez didn't direct it, so why should I see it? But he, like, kind of shepherded it. He produced it. So it's pretty much, it's like his baby. Not interested. Didn't he come up with the idea? Yes. So? Not interested. 
I I really enjoyed the movie. And I went in kind of expecting it to be not really that great, just like a fun, stupid movie. But going in with that mentality, I was pleasantly surprised. If you're going to see this movie, you should go in not knowing anything. So I don't, I'm not going to talk about the movie. No, I don't want to say anything about it. But this, Predators, is the... This is the correct sequel to Predator. This picks up where Predator left off. You can forget Predator 2, don't even watch it. Uh, Predator 2 is a joke. It, it's a movie that explores the value and the cost of compassion. I guess I can't really spoil too much about it. I just had a little bit of trouble with the whole... If they're on then how is it that the who ended up being was able to recognize a That means that these are on this um, so. It's kind of funny that in the first Predator, two of the actors went on to become governors. I wonder if uh, that'll happen to these guys. I thought uh, anyone who thinks that this movie is not worth seeing because Adrian Brody's in it is an idiot because Adrian Brody is totally believable as this badass because, I mean, just look at his whole body of work. He went up against King Kong. Uh, the pianist, he, he fucked up the Nazis and the pianist, and now he's here to fuck up some Predators in Predators. He was a badass in this movie. Yeah, and, I mean, what, what do you expect a Black Ops guy to look like? I wonder if Danny Trejo and Adrian Brody are going to become governors later on in life. Well... It's not totally out of the question. It's possible. Uh, well, Topher Grace? Yeah, Maybe Topher Grace will become... That chick from Predators. Look up this chick. It makes sense that this movie exists. This is the next logical place for them to go with the Predators movies. And it works. And it sets it up perfectly for a sequel. Yeah. In the, in the beginning, is actually, it's mysterious. Uh... You know, if we're going to go see the movie, we know there's going to be predators around the corner somewhere. But This movie doesn't hold your hand. It doesn't. No, we, we, know, we don't know what's going on in the movie. Even if we think we know, okay, there's going to be predators around here somewhere. Everything else, no. we don't. 